Hello and welcome back to Groundforks Place KSP and in today's episode we will be going back to the Joule system. Just to recap a few episodes ago we have been building a satellite network and today we will be deploying a station around Joule. Right, and given it will be an automated station because we already have a relay network so that means I can go and have a remote uh, station build up there that will be launched by a probe. The purpose of the station is to be a refueling station where once we actually get to the dual system with the lander we will be able to come back, land on lathe or something and then come back and refuel to be able to return to Kerbin. Yes, it will be a 2.5 meter and I'm just starting to build my standard cross where I that I typically use and then we put like big docking ports on top and on both sides. I'm gonna get rid of this, then I'm just gonna duplicate this guy, come on. There we go. That's sort of our station, and that has the docking port. Now, onwards to building the tank and everything else we need. So, I need a 2.5 meter big tank, this guy. I'm gonna switch it to red just because I like the color more. And that should be our main thing that should be getting to Joule. And we have to figure out the way... No, actually, let's double that, because it will need to get on to Joule on its own power. We don't want to come there with zero delta V. We want there to come with a half full tank that we can use for refueling. Right. Let's put the skipper. That's 4,607. And now I have to keep reminding myself, although technically some of that is enough to get the jewel, okay, a little bit more, we need to get there with the half full tank. So let's put the fancy RTGs that we have uncovered. Yes. I'm gonna actually just put them like that. Communications dish, because we need to be able to, you know, communicate. Put some lights. So it's not too dark. Something like that, perfect. And um, <laughs> yes. Okay, let's rename it Station Jewel Lathe Refueling Station. I want it in orbit around Lathe because, well, Lathe is actually has an atmosphere and it's a tricky to land and I mean get back. So yeah. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> passenger modules, I don't want any. Uh, let's just put uh, the antenna somewhere here. I'm gonna actually place like two RTGs here and then an antenna here. That would actually be better, yes. Coupling, let's do the decoupling because I needed to move the antenna because here I'm gonna couple some of the fuel tanks, yes. Where is my 2.5 stack separator? There you go. I'm gonna put this for aero brake purposes. Save, yes. Inflate, perfect. This will be perfect for our aero brake around lathe. Now, decoupler, yes. The second, <laughs> this will be the transfer stage. And that will contain a mainsail, yes. Let's just put uh, the correct staging. The idea is that the mainsail pushes us out of the Kerbin sphere of influence, so, and then on skipper we can just circularize. Hopefully arrow break around lathe and then circularize, and then we would have a, two, almost two half full tanks. Or, Two full tanks, yeah, sorry. Now, you know, sometimes you just babble because you didn't have your morning coffee. Right, uh, onwards to the, where's my fuel tank? Yes, there we go. Some more red goodness, there we go. And then I need a, a, a aerodynamic cap. You, no, you, yes. Oh look, and we can put this to orange, that's the shuttle ones, oh, fantastic. I should probably be building a shuttle in one of the next episodes, 
So yeah, just so you know. I know we're into SSTOs, but um, why not? Right, okay, four tanks, let's do the asparagus staging. I feel the asparagus staging will be the right choice here. So let's just put some um, fuel lines. You will be feeding into this tank. You will be feeding into the main tank. Then you again will be feeding into this tank. And then you will be feeding into the main tank. Yes, perfect. Okay, then we need to correct your staging. So, first I want these two engines to fall off, yes, or first these two fuel tanks to fall off, right, and then these guys. Okay, let's see now, separatrons. Since these engines are pretty huge, I do want them, I want to make sure that they fall off and I need separatrons to push them away, otherwise they're just gonna collide with the main body and then we're gonna have some troubles. So you you and I'm putting them in four symmetry because they'll all activate. And then I just correct the staging. That's the easiest way to actually put them guys, so just so you know. Now okay, uh, which ones? I need you to fire and I need Okay, you two will fire. Correct. Then, uh, okay, oh, it's always first and third, okay, good. First and third, just to remove them, and second and fourth will fire. Good. Mm, a little bit of correction of these um, separatrons, and then I think this should be a-okay, right? Okay, now we have a total of 7,800 meters per second, which is nice, but not enough yet. Let's put a remote antenna. I almost say remote tech, but I'm not I'm here playing stock. Sorry, guys. I'm so much used to playing with mods that uh, um, stock doesn't sometimes, you know, just messes me up. Now, let's put some of these more boosters. Where's my Clydesdale? I really love that booster. That's a one powerful booster. Look at that. That's some serious power. Now, okay, four of them? Yes. Ooh, looks awesome. There we go. The four boosters will fire 1.18. You, you will fire together. You will fire together, yes. <clears throat> 1.87 thrust, beautiful. I couldn't have planned it better myself. Just so you know, guys, these craft aren't planned. I'm just, you know, building them as I come along to it. So, yeah, I'm curbling it all the way. I know a lot of, you know, YouTubers actually do a meticulous everything. And I used to do that when I was playing, you know, Interplanetary Voyage. But here in the stock save, I'm just, you know, curbling it up and hoping it works. Now, okay, more struts. Yes. Because more struts are needed. Sure. We'll strut these guys and we'll strut these guys and that hopefully should work oh i forgot almost one thing launch clamps yes please hold right save it and let's launch this sucker all right it's a beautiful morning turn on the lights and hit it 1.87 that's good enough relying mainly on the Clydesdale as you can see I have toned down the throttle to I don't know 40 percent ish showing everything in beautiful 1 and 0.8 times time acceleration because I, that kind of feels right okay Clydesdale's doing most of the job here reducing the thrust because we are already way in high in terms of thrust to weight and look at them, when they burn up, I will already have an apoapsis almost out of the atmosphere. If not out of the atmosphere, let's check it, I'm really curious. Yeah, look at that, 78, couldn't have done better, perfect. Okay, 100 apoapsis, so we're now just gonna coast up to apoapsis and then we're gonna circularize. So beautiful, I'm circularizing actually on my ascent stage. That's grand. 
Okay, and uh, yeah, so I'll only get rid of the two boosters. So yeah, I will be even be able to, you know, start transfer to Jewel with two additional side boosters. Wonderful. Okay, apparently our solid rocket boosters have reached the uh, their landing site. Now burn will be starting in 20 seconds. I really love this better burn time. It's awesome. Actually, it's a stock, but you know, the inspiration came from the mod better burn time. Okay, hitting the gas, and we will be separating our first stage of liquid boosters. There we go. Look at them flipping back. Oh, this is a gorgeous shot. Yes, I might even use it for the episode. Now. If I don't get any better, of course. Right, so a little bit of a burn, and uh, we will be able to circularize around with, let's say, six and a half thousand meters per second. I mean, that's fantastic. Fifty meters per second to go, and perfect. Circularize just to get it nice and hundred by hundred. 106 by 99. I'll take it. All right. With that thing being said, now let's see how we're gonna get to Jewel and Lathe, consequentially. Where's Jewel? Set this target. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna go the standard transfer that I've been doing so far. That worked just well for me. Basically, eject out of the Kerbin Sphere of Influence just by a tad. And once I eject, I will hopefully then be able to actually go and um, go and then uh, set up a jewel encounter so it's sort of like first mini moon moon transfers otherwise interplanetary transfers you will need to plan for the Hohmann transfer and stuff and since I don't have you know the transfer window planner I do, I'm not bothering too much Okay, let's orient our craft in the direction of the maneuver node burn. There we go. Beautiful. Let's time warp until the maneuver node. I really like this function. I mean, guys, 1.8 is awesome just because of that tiny update. Okay, burn in 45 seconds. Kicking the gas. And look at that. So we will be detaching the second set of boosters right about now. Perfect. And that would leave us with a total of... Okay, so we are, we are in uh, sun orbit, or we will be in sun orbit with 5000 delta V to spare. That will, that's good enough in my book. A glory shot for leaving Kerbin. Bye, Kerbin. And Moon. And Minmus. Right, so now let's plan that intercept, shall we? Uh, first, we have to fix up the inclination. I mean, with Jewel, technically, you don't need to fix up the inclination, but it's recommended. Now. Okay, that will be 216 meters per second, and we have in this stage 659 still. So pointing the rocket maneuver prograde, then we'll be fixing the inclination, and then we're going to look for the, an ideal time to burn to get to Joule.
There we go, looks nice kind of with this satellite dish and let's time warp. Perfect, and we will be starting the burn within a couple of seconds and here we go, kicking the gas. Perfect. Okay, now time to plan the jewel encounter. So yeah, we have it as a set target. Let's see, maneuver now, now let's burn. So when do we get that encounter? Okay, further down the line, somewhere around here-ish, and there we go. Easy peasy. Now let's see if we can improve that encounter. Mm, not really, now let's see, ah, there we go. First I'm looking for a different place in orbit, so I take a minimum delta V required, so I can fix it. And then I tweak the maneuver node. So look at that. Almost, so now I'm just gonna tweak down the scale, ooh, oopsie, I screwed the pooch. Now, there we go, a little bit further, there we go close to lathe, just how I like it. Oh, dang it. Okay, oh, I think we have a lathe encounter. Wonderful. 2,627. That will leave us with some, yeah, a little over half. And I think that's good enough, guys. I mean, Having 2000 delta V for this craft is probably a lot more for a small lander, so... Okay, now I lost the maneuver node. Ah, you had to really be... Greedy ground forks. Oh, come on, fix it. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit up, come on. There we go. Periaps is 16. I'll fix it later. Perfect. Right, so we have to point the craft maneuver prograde and then let's ensure that we get to that burn. Burn time it will be quite long because it will be main part will be done on actually my skipper engine, while 443 meters per second will be done on the um, on the mainsail. There we go. Burn starting in five seconds. And hit it. There we go. Getting ready to separate the stages. Kick it. And off it goes. Now the moment of truth, it will be how much did we really pack fuel. Well, in the end it doesn't matter, because this is with this craft, which is actually quite hefty. So if we have a smaller lander, it will be much more. Now, let's see. I'll probably cut out this burn because it will take a while, 2 minutes and 9 seconds, so yeah. 300 meters per second to go and we are closing up on our burn. Right. Okay, that's enough. Let's just limit the thruster and do a little bit more. Where's my lead? Okay, and now let's just fix that encounter. Coming ever so slightly. There we go, perfect. Now it's time to get there. Let's warp. Warp. 
and we are slowly but surely coming up on Jewel. There we go. And switching to the... There we go! Jewel Sphere of Influence. Now, we should be do doing a burn to prepare for the Arrow Break Maneuver, which is always a risky proposition. Let's see if it works. Right, so we are will be approaching Jewel. Let's just plan for a maneuver node somewhere here, where we will be doing the fine tuning of our <clears throat> of our arrow break maneuver. Periapsis. We want to set the periapsis of um, hmm, of lathe periapsis of around forty-ish. I think forty-four will be due enough but let's start with 25 and then we'll correct later okay 25 it will be first <clears throat> there we'll go I'm thinking 26, <coughs> thousand, 26 kilometers will be a little bit too aggressive, but for the time being I'm going to plan with that one and then we're going to, once we get there, we'll fine tune it. I'm just going to thrust limit a lot, so we actually just do a tiny, tiny burn. Now let's warp until the maneuver node. And we're, burn time will be 30 seconds because I've gimped my skipper to actually reduce the thrust, thrust limited it. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. And there's Jewel in the background and there are the rest of the planets. Perfect. 42 seconds till the burn. Okay, and sorry, had a minor crash here, so let's do the burn. I'm gonna adjust the periapsis to be around 46-ish, as I said initially. Hmm, so time to get there. Getting close to lathe. Hi lathe! Now, uh, first things first, I want to be transferring all the fuel forward for the arrow brake maneuver because we want this guy to be in front heat shield and yes, hopefully take the blunt of the braking force. Okay, getting down in the atmosphere and getting ready for an arrow brake. Okay, this will be... This will be dangerous, I'm assuming. Once we start dipping into the atmosphere, oh, should I leave my antenna on or not? I'm not sure. Well, I guess we'll just have to figure it out. Heating. Come on, looking good so far. Oh, shoot, antenna got broke. Uh-oh, 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 come on! Overheat, overheat, uh-oh, uh-oh, don't you be breaking on me, Sonny! Come on, it was a short arrow brake maneuver. Okay, let's extend this antenna. I don't know why it's still working, probably due to the relays I have, actually. Good thing that I had them. Whew. Detaching the 
heat shield and uh, yeah the other antenna is just yeah it's dead okay never mind thrust limiter hit it and then just let's reduce the periapsis and or apoapsis and let's just break around it so I won't have as much delta V as I planned but ultimately even if I am left with some fuel it will be welcome all right my plan is to go for some low uh, apoapsis and periapsis that will need to be corrected here so let's add the apoapsis Let's set Val as target, or can I do that even? Hmm, good question. Tell you what, let's first fix up the periapsis, yes. But overall, <laughs> we at least managed to arrive at lathe, which is fantastic. I got worried that when I lose my connection that I won't be able to steer the ship, but apparently I was able to. How? I have no idea. getting to the apoapsis, I, I'm, I'm attributing it to the relays, but... Okay, and let's get ready for the burn. Hit it. Okay, circularized. Let's see what we'll do, go for the periapsis. Now I'm trying to find a good spot to, you know, align it. This will be a hefty burn, but... Something like that, perhaps. I want my periapsis to be around 100 or... I think around 100 should do nicely. So 100 by 100. And I know, yes, we, will, we, we are burning our main fuel, which was the point of getting here, but... Imagine if you come in the lander, and then you want to get up, and then you want to dock. However much fuel, or however little you have... Uh, uh, fuel you have you will still want to refuel here so yeah you don't want to be too high in the orbit because you might not have enough delta v to get there right so let's correct the inclination it doesn't need to be perfect it just needs to be good enough there we go and then i need to reduce the apoapsis and it will be good enough yeah so at the periapsis we burn to get a 100 by 100 periapsis and uh, or apoapsis that's 193 so that will leave us with a little bit more than a thousand meters per second good enough in my book i was hoping to get there with more but yeah i was hoping also that the aero brake maneuver would be more efficient and that it wouldn't burn up so i wouldn't have to burn but uh, on the plus side we didn't blow up I'll take that as a win. All right, and getting ready for the burn. Perfect, there we go. All right, so time to kill the engine, point the station, normal prograde and Take a screenshot and wrap up for the episode, guys. I hope you liked the, the today's episode. Like if you like the video, and I will be seeing you in the next one. Uh, yes, so, uh, oh, right, let's just do some one more glory shot if we can. No, not that one, that one, yes. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. Like if you like, and I'll see you all in the next one. Groundforks 